Back with another video breakdown. Trey Scotty is here, and we are going to be talking about Xavier's newest commit. Actually, they've gotten a few of them since we last talked, but this video is going to focus on John Hughley, the newest big man for the Musketeers, Oklahoma transfer. He's listed at around six foot nine, 275 pounds. We're going to take a look at what he does best and how he might fit into Xavier's system. Trey, where do you want to start with John Hughley? Well, the first thing I want to start with, Rick, is I do like to look at the numbers, you know, on, on some of these guys. And, uh, you know, I think that we know uh, Sean Miller and the staff prioritize rebounding from these positions. And the first thing that stands out with Hughley, I've got these written down, is he was uh, in 21-22, which was his best season he's had at Pittsburgh. Uh, he was 21.8% uh, rebound percentage defensively, which was uh, 142nd nationally. He was 11.2%. Uh, offensive rebound percentage, which was 114th nationally, that's pretty good, uh, obviously. And so basically all those those numbers indicate, right, uh, defensively, if you're 21.8, shot goes up, there's a 21.8% chance you're coming down uh, with it. So with 10 guys on the court to be, you know, 20%, that's that's obviously that's obviously pretty good. And then just to have, you know, a, a even chance of getting it compared to everybody on the court, offensively, right, you basically got a 1 in 10 chance with 10 guys out there. Offensively, I think that's one of the first things the staff has kind of looked at um, just from a physicality standpoint and uh, who, who they're trying to replace as a whole, probably when they're sitting there and the portals beginning to, to, to open. And the next thing uh, really is his efficiency. And uh, obviously he spent this past season uh, with Porter Moser at Oklahoma um, coach, you know, Porter, he's, he's tremendous on the off. He's a tremendous coach on both ends of the ball, but he's very efficient offensively. Um, they've run a lot of good stuff. And so, uh, I do know that at the beginning of his time in the Big 12, uh, they, they felt like they needed to get more physical and bigger inside. So in the past, if you think about, you know, Moser's best team, which was that Final Four team at Loyola, they had Crutwig get the five. And, and Crutwig uh, was a guy that could really pass. He could post, uh, just really skilled. You know, a little bit of what they do with the with the Joker, you know, Jokic in the NBA and things of that nature. And so – um, that was kind of his preference going into the Big 12, and I think he felt like he had to get more athletic. Uh, and Hughley, uh, you know, maybe he's not like a springboard off the ground, uh, but he does feel a little bit more of that physical presence. And so they kind of tried to do a little bit of what they've done in the past offensively, right, kind of playing through a five on the perimeter with DHOs, you know, handing the ball off, ball screen, um, just kind of playing with that guy as your quarterback at times. Um, and that was a little bit different, right, from what he did best at Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh was just kind of like, we're going to throw the ball down to him uh, and, and let him let him play a little bit of bully ball. And that wasn't necessarily Oklahoma's system. Um, he did have an incredibly efficient year at Oklahoma. I mean, he shot 60% from two. He shot 39% from three on 33 attempts, uh, which is which is really good. Um, you know, he saw he shot the ball from three 33 times in 422 minutes, right? So, so that's at least makes you respect it um, from from a scouting uh, perspective. Like if you're on the other team, and I think that's big on what you know what Moser and the Oklahoma staff wanted was to be able to space the floor with him. Um, and so he did shoot some threes, uh, but he shot 42 threes in 948 minutes in 21-22 at 16%. So he was not even shooting, you know, half the amount of threes per minute a couple of years ago. So that was definitely just to give some context, right, on what was the difference for, from where he was when he was doing maybe maybe really well statistically versus not. Um, and, and I think that's important to look at in context, right, like college basketball more so than the NBA. It, there's so many different ways to, to skin the cat, uh, the ways to play. And the NBA is kind of more one, you know, the Warriors are, are very unique. Obviously, again, uh, Denver playing through Joker is unique. But for the most part, like teams, uh, it's a little bit more vanilla team to team what they're doing. Uh, and college is a little bit more, you know, system A versus B versus C versus D. And so obviously the stats have gone down, but uh, that's really like the first thing all encompassing I'm looking at with him, Rick. Uh, so yeah. Trey, the, the one thing that I noticed, and this is just to kind of sum up what you were just talking about there is early days when he's at his best sophomore year at Pittsburgh, you see him getting the ball in the post a lot, post up, scoring with his back to the basket at Oklahoma last year where it didn't seem like he was as effective. I saw him catching the ball in the perimeter a lot, facing the basket, not getting the ball with his back to the basket in the low post. Is that kind of fair to say the difference between how he's used? 
100% accurate, right? And uh, again, that's just, I'm not saying one philosophy is right or wrong. Um, and I'm not, I actually think he, you know, those efficiency numbers were good for Oklahoma. But to your point, I think it was just the sheer amount of post ups, right? Was uh, significantly less at Oklahoma. And I would quantify that as reason number one, for example, is points per game, you know, points, points that he was scoring per game were down. All right. Let's jump into these clips. Um, so, you know, what he does best, he's a big, physical body right like uh he he's just that guy it's like he he can hold you off like he looks like an offensive uh tackle you know prospect one of those guys like he just got big hips big back big shoulders um like the best thing he does is hold his space right and you just kind of see here like he's just kind of getting to his spot uh he, he's trying to get deep catches i mean look he catches this ball rick two feet in the paint and again, that's obviously what you want as an offensive player. Like if I'm two feet in the paint and catching, uh, I'm getting to my spot again. He's just kind of pump faking. Obviously, you're playing Duke right there, a guy with a lot of length. Um, it just kind of powers uh, through him. Like he is a he is a power big. Like he's not. Um, he's got he's got decent feet for his size. He's not going to be like uh, if you think back to Karim Cantor. Like Karim was tremendous with his pace, his footwork, his spin moves. Um, I wouldn't say he's quite like that uh, in terms of his niftiness. He's uh, he quicker, have, though. Yeah, but he does have decent feet for his size. But at the end of the day, it's power, right? And so yep. it's like those first couple of clips, right, like he caught it deeper. This one, he catches it a little bit farther outside the paint. And, again, like he's just bulldozing, right? Like this is just you against your son in the backyard, Rick. Like That's going, right. you're just going mano y mano here, right? Like right at him. Okay, guy cuts him off basically forced him to go the other way. And that's a good little spin move. And you'll see here, he wants to get back um, to his right hand, but it, this is the, this is the bread and butter of what he does. Uh, again, just face up again, nothing real special to this. Just simple one dribble puts his shoulder into that guy, knocks him backwards, uh, ends up being, ends up being a bucket. I mean, here, this is against Baycott from North Carolina, right? Like Baycott's one of the best centers that we've had in college basketball the last couple of years. And again, like he's, he's just catching the ball. Uh, he's he slowed crab walk dribble is what we call that. And he's getting right to his spot and finishing up over uh, with strength. So like, it's not and all these are the sophomore too. Yeah. And like, it's not like it's a secret. Like he's one of those guys that like, you know what he's going to do, uh, but stopping it is uh, that's a whole, that's a whole nother animal. Um, so, you know, we talked about his offensive rebounding numbers at the beginning. Uh, but again, like he's just a guy that like, he is a space mauler. Like, look at this right here. He's just in a wrestling match here on the on the the block closest to the bottom of the screen he wins that he's going to win a lot of matchups like that like when when his motor uh is is up and going and uh, he, he's a force to be reckoned with uh physically and so again when he's at his best he's around the block he's around the paint um he's shown again that he can do some things uh with Oklahoma on the perimeter which we'll show next but I think when he really had his best statistical season uh it's because of the type of clips that we're just watching so yeah Trey one thing that stuck out to me is looking at the efficiency numbers he was way better on the right block versus the left block uh do you think that has to do with kind of his style of just using that big body to kind of power through you it's easier for him to sort of shield the defender on that using that left side and, and finish on the right side yeah I mean I I I, I think that's a tough one because some guys like it better on the left block as a right-hander uh, because they can kind of get to the middle and play yeah, the midline space. hook. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I think when you're getting to the, so let's say you're on the, the, the if we're looking at the court right now, right. And uh, you're on the block towards the top sideline. So that would be the right block where he's more efficient. I think for him, there's less decisions and he's just going right through and finishing. Right. Because if he yeah. were to pass out from that block, let's say he's got his back there. He's passing out with his left hand. That's probably not a strength, right, from what I saw on film because I didn't even really see him attempt to do that. Uh, on the other side, maybe as a guy and, – and, like, Hughley's not a complete black hole. Um, he's not, like, a horrific passer. He's not, like – you know, he's not a Karim Cantor level passer to kind of go back to him and, and Xavier fans are used to watching his game. Um, I think when you're on the other block, you, you have a chance to make more decisions You because, again, you can see the court – um, and throw it out with your right hand if you need to. So I think a little bit of that is player preference. Um, you know, I coached a kid in high school who's kind of, a, you know, a bigger five. He's going to Rutgers, like a top 100 kid, and he preferred that other block because he could kind of see the floor a little bit better, and he loved getting to that that little hook shot uh, right kind of down the middle of the court. So a little bit of that is style of play. I think a little bit of that is your ability to make decisions. And I think a little bit of that's probably just player comfortability and preference. But he does such a good job of those deep seals, Rick, that when you go deep seal like that, 
on that block, you're just going right up with your right hand versus the other side on the deep seal. Um, he's not necessarily a tremendous finisher with his left hand. You're not going to get those as efficiently on that block. Yeah, the defender's closer to that one, too, can affect the shot a little bit better, whereas on that right side, you've got a lot of body to get through to, to get to it. his shot. No doubt. No doubt. Um, I did want to show a little bit of what they did at Oklahoma. Um, again, like they would pop him a little bit, right? And uh, like this is pretty, this is pretty smooth. Like it, you know, that's you know, thirty nine percent on on thirty three attempts. Like, you know, is that fluky a little bit? I don't know. Like, how many threes will Xavier want him to shoot? I, I can't tell you for sure. Um, here's them. There's BYU, right? Uh, BYU is sending this ball screen to the baseline. Um, again, a pop is is a way you would beat this ball screen defense. Um, and you can tell BYU they don't even run out. They're letting them shoot it. But, I mean, again, guy shot 39% on 33 threes. That's pretty good. Here's a little bit what we were talking about, Rick, where they're reversing the ball through him in the center. He did a little bit of this at Pittsburgh. I don't want to act like he didn't at all, but he did a lot more of this at Oklahoma. It's just kind of more what they do um, offensively. And, uh, again, like you'll see here, he's he's going to one side of the court. He's trying to make a play as a handle. He's kind of the quarterback in this situation. He doesn't have it. He immediately turns to the other side, goes and sets a ball screen, um, ends up going rolling down to a seal, gets a post up here as opposed to just like he's not just sitting down there like, okay, uh, mano y mano, like I'm just going to post you up, get get the ball to, to John. This is a little bit of a read in their offense. It's a little bit more of a, of a feel, of a motion where like they have different options. That just ends up being one of the options where I think at Pittsburgh he was getting more like, this is a set play for John, and we're going we're going into him. Whereas Oklahoma's offense was a little bit more read and react, um, a little bit more balanced, a little bit more of a guard attack um, at times. But again, like when when you're when Rick, I'm going to minimize the screen here for one sec. I, I think that can be a positive at times because he's played in different systems for different coaches, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that with some other guys as well uh, today. But he's played in a system where he just goes back to the basket. He's played in a system where he's handing off on the perimeter. Um, he's played for very good coaches. Again, I mean, he didn't have his best statistical season, as we said, but Porter Moser's tremendous on, on the detail side of things as a basketball coach. So to learn from a guy like that, add some things to his skill set. Um, you know, we do know that Xavier likes to play two bigs at times when they can and let those guys kind of read and react and make plays within their offense. It's not ultimate freedom, but like they do, they are making reads and decisions. I think going to a place like Oklahoma, if you're going glass half full, uh, that that could be a positive, even though his points were down. I look at that, it's like, okay, this guy's a guy who can play in multiple ways and multiple systems potentially, and, and hopefully come in here as, as an older guy and kind of understand that, you know, this is this is one that's gone well for me. This is one that hasn't. Uh, he's not just been in one system uh, just to learn all the verbiage. It's a it's a lot, of the, a lot of these pro guys, right? Like now we're seeing all these one year transfers. Well, think about these guys in the NBA that are team to team to team to team every year, like the Jeff Greens of the world. Part of that is because they can pick up on a system. They're smart. They can they can kind of understand what it is going into a locker room. And so those are all reps for a guy like that. And ultimately that could be that could be a positive. Whereas maybe a couple of years ago. Guys change the schools every year. It's like, ooh, I don't know. There, there, there could be some positives, I think, just, just in this new world. We don't know all the answers to that. I'm not saying that's the case, but but I think that's probably part of what Xavier's looking at there. Yeah, and then we want to finish up by you have a couple things to look at in terms of how it will fit specifically into Xavier's system, correct? Yes, I do. So um, just in terms of the fit, uh, I, I think he's a tremendous fit. Uh, th these are all going to be clips of, of what Xavier has done. Uh, over the last two seasons but like the first thing that comes to mind for me rick is duckins and like we talk about ducking in for the ball i think it's kind of the first thing for me the first thing that came to mind uh was a guy ducking in for space right so here's Djokovic, here's claude right on the drive we've seen this a million times and you see Djokovic here he is pinning in this guy under the rim to kind of create space for the ball handler i think hugley could be unbelievable uh, doing this for Xavier. He's such a wide body. Uh, he does have good feet. Again, I talk about that offensive uh, tackle comparison a little bit. Um, I, I really do think he is a guy who can create spacing lanes for drivers for Xavier. We've seen that's what they love to do the last two seasons. Um, I think Hughley's another indication they're not going to get away from that whatsoever. Um, I mean, if, if we're going from Djokovic to Hughley in that situation right there, that's like at least a four to one ass to duck in ratio that you're increasing <laughs> by. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And it's like, that's hard to get around, man. That's hard to get around. And it, I think part of the reason that's effective is a lot of teams don't do that as consistently. It's more about cutting and spacing. And so I think coach, like players are not used to guarding that. 
um, you know, maybe like some other stuff, like some other, like we talked about. Well, it's also college. cheating. It's a giant moving screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like awful. colleges have different systems, yeah. right? NBA is a little bit more vanilla, uh, you know, as I was saying. And so like, you're just not used to guarding that kind of stuff. Um, and so again, that, that was the first thing that came to my mind when I saw, had seen uh, that he committed, but again, this is just more flow. Obviously he's going to be a really good duck in guy. Again, here's him getting the ball, right? I'm sure these are more the clips they're showing him offensively, but I think I, I don't think that, that, that they're trying to pull a fast one on him. I think this is something that he's going to do really well is seal his guy as they're reversing the ball. Obviously, here's Nunji a couple years ago, uh, just getting to the middle of the paint on a post up. Um, they we also talked wrote, about this on the on the Twitter Spaces yesterday. Someone was asking if they'll be using this play for him. Yeah, and I, I think they will. And um, you know, this is a this is a low away screen, right, Rick? Where you're, it's a little cross screen, block to block. Um, and, and one thing about the cross screens uh, compared to other screens uh, for bigs is when you, when you have a guy who's maybe a little bit on the the less mobile side, like Euclid, right? Like his strengths are his strength, his size. Um, you like these block to block screens because their power is more of a factor. If you're setting screens for him, like coming down from the elbow as a cutter, that's more like speed. Uh, like think of like a Jalen Reynolds, right? Like, uh, you know, at that time, like Chris Mack, they would set a lot of screens for him more on the run because of his athletic ability. These cross screens are more for bigger, blockier uh, guys. Like think maybe like a Sean O'Mara at times. And then again, we just haven't seen a guy that's kind of produced like Hughley has at the high major level to, to my memory the last couple of years. Like, like think more of a James Farr, you know, like a bigger brute, like, you know, big, a mauler per se, right, in a lot of ways. So I think this is another set you'll see, uh, some low away stuff, um, and then just some keeps, right? And this is where I think, like, the Porter Moser thing is going to pay some dividends, right? Like, a lot of what they did to Oklahoma is read and react in the five out. Here's Nudgy just keeping the ball, making a read. Again, that's not a set play. That's just throughout their flow. So you rewind um, that one back. It skipped there over the the play yeah. kind of for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but, you know, you see Nudgy here, catches the ball. This is just Xavier's flow offense. This is not a set he keeps the ball, ends up going perimeter to post. Um, that's a read, like I said, and I think he's probably making more reads, uh, you know, at, at his Oklahoma time this past year. And that's where I talk about. I think maybe there could be some 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 silver linings and, and positives of things that he learned during that time. So overall, I, I like to fit a lot. Um, I, th I think he fits right in with what they're doing. Uh, I think that he can play alongside Fremantle at times. Um, I think there can be times where they play, you know, a little bit smaller lineup, but they're playing four guards slash wings, and and he's the, he's the five man, and they're playing that way um, as well. And as the the roster shaping up, um, obviously there's nothing there's nothing finite at this moment, but it seems like they're going to have different rosters playing different kinds of ways. So, all right, great stuff, Trey. Any final thoughts here on John Hughley? No, thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right, well that does it. Another video breakdown. That's John Hughley. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Rick.